This is the Fifth Estate Winning Headlines, your media police post. In this segment, we summarize some of the headlines that you might have missed this morning. We also take a look at the political pieces that we call cartoons in this country. Today is the 31st of July 2020 and I am Miss Gay. I'm Tom. And I am GK. I want to wish you Eid al Adha to uh, Mubarak to you and everyone at home and anyone who's celebrating this great holiday. Um, let's go to the headlines in case you missed them. Daily Nation. Yeah. Our children to learn under trees, Magoha. In the Standard, Rebellion in Huru Raila Strongholds. And in the Star, Akombe. IEBC insiders led Musando to his death. To death. Mm. Let's begin with the Star. Yeah. Now, uh, according to the story, mm. Rosalind Akombe, a former IEBC commissioner, has now come out uh, on the three year anniversary of uh, Chris Musando's uh, death to yeah. say, um, listen, we don't know what happened. Your own colleagues apparently led you to the slaughterhouse like Judas. Um, they sold you for 30 cents. That's what she tweeted. Um, IEBC chairman uh, Wafula Chabukati has since come out and responded and said, listen, it's unfair for a combat to speak three years later on. Mm. Um, yet she knows that the murder took place then. Mm. Um, and she should bring whatever evidence she has forward um, and help solve the case. Mm. Um, it's, a, it's, it's, an interest, it's an interesting time for this to come up. Mm. Given that we're approaching a new election, mm. um, IBC has had its issues, that much we know. Yes. However, why wait three years? If, if you knew something was a foul, mm. why, why, why is she waiting? <laughs> um, <laughs> you, you know, DGK, this, this woman, on the day of the election, on the day before the election, she took off. She, went she to climbed Dubai. onto a plane she and ran away. Second election. Yeah, second election. Yeah. She climbed a plane, she took off. And I thought she has, uh, and then there was a law that uh, with, uh, without um, uh, a qu um, what do you call it, a quorum at the at the IBC IBC. commission, mm -hmm. uh, then an election will not happen. My suspicion is she was trying to watch the election from happening. Yeah. She should be the last person to speak. <laughs> in fact, uh, the rest of us who are still here in Kenya, where yeah. this is still our home, we don't yeah. have places to run away to, and yeah. we're still here trying to fix things, should yeah. not succumb to Uchokozi from Uchokozi. afar. Yeah. From afar, that's what's, true. What's her name again? Apo? <laughs> <laughs> Roslyn Akombe, not Apombe, <laughs> please. Oh, wow. um, but I mean, rest in peace, Nsando. We hope that you know his family and himself find justice, um, because he was slain. They say they found him, his body dead in a forest in Kikuyu. Um, they say that he was a man who was to ensure, you know, um, solid transmission of results and that this may have been a foul, something may have happened. Yeah. Anyway, we have a three part criteria that we're going to use to break down the headline. Yeah. We'll ask ourselves if it's topical or speculative, if it's repetitive or groundbreaking, and if it's thoughtful or just plain lazy. Yeah. It <laughs> is topical because it is an anniversary. Yeah. Um, of his death. Yeah. Um, however, because it's Akomba's tweets, it really annoys me. <laughs> it really does. Toss it. Uh, yeah, we're tossing it. Um, let's move to the standard. The standard. Rebellion in Uhuru Rela strongholds. Now, I do not know what constitutes as rebellion, but the standard seem to think just because one former MP of Mokoroine has, uh, because he has attacked the president, then it, that constitutes rebellion. Now, this fellow, he is called Kabando Kabando. He says, initially seen as a staunch defender of the head of state, uh, of the president, he fired the first salvo yesterday, warning that Kenyatta's government was sinking. And unless the head of state repurposes his political life soon, there will be nothing else to salvage. But he doesn't have a political life first to talk about. <laughs> but second, I think... Uh, who doesn't have a political life? The person who said this. Kabando Kabando. 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 He knows himself. Now, um, <laughs> <laughs> what I want to say is this. I think Uhuru Kenyatta's political mind is far ahead of every other person. This thing that people call a rebellion was not rebellion. This thing was curated to fail by the president himself. So you're talking about the county the, revenue the, the, the county, formula? This, this, yes, the, the CRA uh, formula that was being uh, debated in, in Senate this week. Yes. And I think the president has done something genius. And the genius thing he has done is uh, ensure that uh, Gemma is being fought from uh, every other quarter. What is actually happening is that Gemma is coming back to the fold. And very soon, Gemma will be singing Uhuru Kenyatta from day one to day last. However, the Senate didn't vote in favor of what, Gemma, but, what is in Gemma's best interest. Because if we're saying that the CRA formula, the third one, is hugely population driven, which means the more people you are, the more money you get. we will get, the, 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 they, they still had a stalemate. So mm -hmm. it means 
GK, let the me plan you. backfired. Let me ask you, if you're president of Kenya today and you, Thank had, you. A, and, and you had a Senate debate, yes. would you have your Senate uh, majority leader fly out? fly out to a neighboring country that no. doesn't want you? So now the problem is, as the president, uh, I assumed that the deal was sealed, that everyone was going to vote the way I had said that they should vote. Okay, let me ask a, a second question. So that's why I was confident <laughs> enough to send my uh, majority, majority group th there's a party, on, a, there's on an a, errand. There's a party called Kanu, <laughs> and their party leader was not uh, there at the Senate. Uh, could we, should we still say that uh, the president was very serious with this thing passing? I think he was serious. I mean, the, if, if we look at it, cash should follow function. I'm a firm believer of that. Mm. Um, the constitution is also a firm believer of that. Exactly. <laughs> and I really believe that if people take a step back and they don't put uh, politics ahead of what is actually good for their constituents, they will see that we need to uh, recalibrate how money has been spent at the county level. That is the reality. Let me tell you, Uhuru Kenyatta will kill two birds with one stone. This gamma will get what it, want, what it wants. But still, Gemma will still be behind him. To him has drank soon. the Kool-Aid. Ah, very fast. He has drank the Kool-Aid. Very much. Let us move to the Daily Nation, guys. Yeah. Our children to land and the trees, Magoha. <laughs> <laughs> is this, I can't believe that this is a headline in the year uh, 2020, the year of our law 2020. We're going, okay. Let me, let me just tell you exactly what's happening. So millions of school children who have been whiling away at home playing, yeah. and I think this would have been me, public school child as I was, would have been playing the whole time since February, will soon be required to attend communal classes in their neighborhoods. This follows a change of approach by the Ministry of Education on home-based learning after radio, TV, phone, and online lessons failed to reach thousands of children in villages, towns, and slums. Wow. So this community-based model is scheduled to begin in September, that learners will be taught under trees, in open spaces and community <laughs> social halls as they await to reopen schools in January. The CS said that chiefs and Nyumbakumi leaders will be activated to identify teachers who will offer lessons at no cost to parents. The teachers who have been on full salary since schools were shut in March on March 15th will be expected to teach learners in their home areas regardless of the schools they attend. <laughs> so although <laughs> private schools have been engaging learners online, Prof Magoha says a majority of children who attend public school have been left out. Although the Kenya Institute of Curriculum Development continues to provide <laughs> remote learning through radio, TV and online programs, there are some children who are unable to access them and that is what this plan is meant to reach. Yo, yo. Fantastic. This is good. Class, uh, schools are closed. What do you want them to study? Under I tents? did not want them to stand mm. outside and under the trees look, they as they did in the 1900s <laughs> under missionaries. Well, look, if schools are closed, then you make b do with what you have. Oh, okay. I think that one is still up for debate, guys. Here's the thing I want to say. Yeah. There's a necessity for continued remote learning. But there's also necessity for creative thinking. Yeah. And I think that the ministry needs to be more creative in how it decides to package distance learning in yeah. this era of corona. Yeah. For this reason, even as a country, business-wise, we're still thinking go, no go. How are we going to moderate between opening up our businesses but keeping people safe? So mm. how are we going to moderate between having our children learn but keeping them safe? You cannot tell me that you put children together and hope that they will not reinfect each other with corona in some sort of way. <laughs> what are we going to do? Should there be a resurgence in the cases of corona? Yeah. What I are we going to do then? You're right there. We need more creative thinking when it comes to this <laughs> other than going under a tree communally. Oh, Guys, yes, I, I have also to want to say, one last thing. Yes, yes. I feel like this coronavirus has just magnified the disparities between the poor and the rich. Yeah. More so disparities in education. So yeah. if you are disadvantaged in any way, like for instance, public school children who don't have access to even average quality distance education, yeah. their level of education has gone significantly low. lower. And even as we think about what we can do to mitigate that, we need to put those children in categories, not a blanket. Yeah. There's those ones who have been had access to moderate um, school. Yeah. Um, those ones were probably put back three to six months. Yeah. Those ones who've had minimum interaction online, maybe seven to ten months. Mm. And those ones who've had no learning at all, who maybe are a year behind. You make valid points, and I think CS Magoha should reach out to you, Miss K. <laughs> really? <laughs> you should. So guys, who are we giving our winning headlines? Definitely not Magoha. Not, no, Magoha. not Magoha. But I like the standard rebellion in Who Rhino Strongholds, I because like I feel that, that there has been a rebellion. <laughs> there is no rebellion. You then we have no any headline the, because the, we tossed a if pombe. I, if I was a corner, at the corner street, I would have chosen a pombe. Okay, mm. so who do we give it to? The star. 
The star was tossed. <laughs> we tossed it way back in the dark ages. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we should give it to the standard because there's intrigue around the rebellion. Something happened in Senate, we don't know what it was, so it's giving us food for thought. I say standard. Yeah, there you sure, have it. Cool. Standard gives us our winning headline. On to the political pieces that we call cartoons in this country, where we also have a three part criteria that we will use. We ask ourselves is it humorous or dry? Is it satirical or pessimistic? And is it effective or just plain lazy? Mm. And now we have a uh, caricature that is delineation, Nula, caricature of uh, C.S. Magoha. And he is, uh, he is thinking of 2021. That's the <laughs> next academic year. And in the hourglass is, uh, I think, COVID coming through the sun. COVID yeah, is, instead is of sand. Instead of sun is. So, in other words, what Dula is telling us is Time's that running COVID, out. yeah. I mean, we may not even have an academic year in 2021. I agree with that. Yeah, but it calls for, in this case, creative thinking. It doesn't need to stop learning or whatever. Altogether, it's true. Okay, we can park that. Let's go so to the standard. You have a caricature of Donald Trump and he's doing thumbs up next to two teleprompters. <laughs> what is the story here? Um, I think he there's something about absentee voting. He made a tweet uh, that might have been controversial, saying um, that they might have to delay elections, but something that, like that. But that he's has never happened in the history. Living like an African leader, please <laughs> go on Trump. Yeah, like Trump. Kudos, yeah. To Kudos to him. So we him. keep the cartoon or toss it? Uh, toss, keep it. it. Keep it. toss it. Keep it. Toss okay. it. Okay, let's do, let's do the star and then Parking we might bay. have the star. In the star. In the star, you have caricature of C.S. Magoha and he is dressed in Ashuka. <laughs> and uh, the Ashuka is, uh, what is it, it called? Nyumbakumi. 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 And they are, they, he's hanging or he's removing pegs from, uh, <laughs> he's from hanging public them. Is he hanging them? Yeah. These are children, school going children, and he's hanging them on, on drawing lines. And the caption there is online learning. And, and he's what he's saying is, sorry. sorry, we've left, we have left you hanging so long. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I really like this cartoon because it's like a pun on so many levels. They're hanging on the lines. <laughs> The internet, the internet may be hanging. May be hanging. Yeah. But, but why give him a shuka? And then this? it's online learning. Online I love learning. it. No, this is hilarious. This is fantastic. Miss K, this one we can win. Yes, yes, this one. I love it. Okay. This is my winning question. No argument here. Uh, Ozan from the start gives us our winning question. So now for our final thought. But before we get there, please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And now our final thought. It is inspired by a book, not a book, a TED Talk titled Rethinking Infidelity. Ooh, I can't wait to get there. <laughs> a talk for anyone who has ever loved by, wow. by Esther Perel. Oh, look at you two. Um, your face has lit up. <laughs> lit up. Oh my God. Can I give a summary of the week go before ahead, we get go there? Ahead, go ahead. So on Monday, we looked at the guiding book for the week, Talk Like Ted by Carmine Gallo, The Nine Public Speaking Secrets of the World's Top Minds. Gallo believes ideas are the currency of the 21st century, and the book looks at the techniques um, that have made TED Talks famous and um, shared widely. The book is divided into three parts. One, emotion, the value of passion as a part of any good storytelling, the use of stories to break down walls and paint emotions into the listener's brain. Two, being novel, teaching people something new while delivering jaw-dropping moments and also using humor because the brain loves humor. Um, and to try and give anecdotes and stories that have made you smile, which also will make the audience sort of smile. The third element was to be memorable. So you do this by sticking to the 18 minute rule and by painting a, a mental picture for the audience through the use of pictures and videos. And lastly, by remaining authentically you, just being yourself. On Tuesday, we reviewed the TED Talk by Malance Bart Williams called Change Your Channel, where her tone and presentation worked well to articulate how Africa is actually a rich continent that does not need aid or pity from the West. She pushed us to change our perspective. On Wednesday, we looked at a TED Talk by Brainy Brown, The Power of Vulnerability, and the talk was about human connection, our ability to empathize, to belong, to love. The poignant and funny talk shares deep insight from her research on how we learn to embrace our vulnerabilities and imperfections, how do we cultivate courage and compassion and connection. On Thursday, we looked at a TED Talk by Sir Ken Robinson, a humorous talk on how schools kill creativity. He explained how society stigmatizes making mistakes, and because this happens, we, we become less willing and less able to produce original content in fear of failure and non-acceptance. And today, we're looking at infidelity. 
Rethinking Infidelity, a talk for anyone who has ever loved by mm. Esther Perel. Esther Perel is a Belgian psychotherapist, author, speaker, and creator of a podcast called Where Should We Begin? And she also wrote a book in 2006, Mating in Captivity. Mm. Um, she begins by asking a set of questions, and I like these questions. She asks, why do we cheat? Why do happy people cheat? And when we say infidelity, what exactly do we mean? Why do we think that men cheat out of boredom and fear of intimacy, but women cheat out of loneliness and hunger for intimacy? And is an affair always the end of a relationship? Well, one thing I like about she, what she says is that she produces a double standard. And she says that this double standard in thinking about infidelity has been there as long as there's been monogamy and infidelity. Mm. Men are pressured to boast or exaggerate their conquests, while women are pressured to hide, minimize, and deny any infidelity that has ever happened. Mm. And she says this has nothing to do with love, because men relied on women's fidelity to know whose children those were and who gets the cows when <laughs> I die. <laughs> Love it, <laughs> oh my and she gives a definition of what would constitute infidelity and she says it has three elements a secretive relationship and that's the core structure of an affair an emotional co connection to another to one degree or another and third sexual alchemy mm. and what she means by alchemy is that you don't necessarily have to do the act or engage in it but it's that imagination she mm. quotes marcel proust who says it is our imagination that is responsible for love not mm -hmm. the other person. Then she ends by saying affairs are an act of betrayal, but they are also an expression of longing and loss. Wow. No. <laughs> uh, I don't know what I agree. This guy has said so much. <laughs> I really have. But, <laughs> but I want to dedicate this TED Talk to 2J and Diem. Oh, <laughs> who are not present. Who are not present. Okay. And I want to also say this. Uh, I'll say... Uh, because they are not here, I'll say, uh, because they are, they are my friends, uh, uh, if they are not my friends, I'll not, you would not be dedicating. I'll not be dedicating this. <laughs> but now, now le le let me tell you what I took from this. She says that good can come from cheating. Can you imagine that? She says, because I think that good can come from an affair. Mm. I have often been asked a very strange question. Would I ever recommend it? Uh, are you for or against it? That's what she was asked. And she gave a beautiful answer. She says, I look at affairs from a dual perspective. Mm -hmm. Heart and betrayal, one side, mm -hmm. and growth and self-discovery on the other. Yeah. All right? Now, uh, she also has another lesson. And that lesson is don't be afraid to leave. And uh, it's easy for me to say that because uh, I'm not married. But uh, I'll say it nonetheless. Now... She says, if divorce carried all the shame uh, today choosing to stay, yeah. when you can leave is a new shame. And I agree. Now, she says, if you can divorce, why do we still have affairs? And I also agree because you should, <laughs> I mean, if you feel like someone is uh, bringing you problems, you just, you just leave them. But then she says there's logic for this. And yeah. She says, if you have everything at home, then there is no reason for you to look for something else, right? <laughs> right? So you answer me, right okay, or wrong? Okay, right, under duress. It's, 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 it's damn wrong. I refuse to be cowed. It's damn wrong. Now, she gives a story of a, a lady called Priya. Priya is this, I imagine she's Indian, right? Yeah. Yes. And uh, she, she stays with her family, nice family. But then one day, uh, this guy, I think Sir Hurricane Sandy shows up. Mm -hmm. And this uh, guy is called an arborist. Arborist? Whatever he's called. Mm -hmm. He has tattoos, he's a muscles guy, comes and he... He wipes the entire family and takes them and helps them. Saves but them. Saves them and, and, and Priya falls in love with this guy. Mm. But this lady had everything. And uh, I must pause you there because <laughs> I feel like you misunderstood what you were saying. No, and no, she was no, no, no. Let me finish. The reasons let me, for let, let me, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Okay. And, and this story <laughs> to me, and she says, highlights, when you seek the gaze of another, it isn't always our partner we are turning away from mm. but the person we that the person that have that the person we ourselves have become yeah now i'm sure that is what you wanted to say yes right? i wanted <laughs> to bring it home in the context of yeah, yeah but i brought it home now you now haven't. you see she she <laughs> now you see what uh, in, in my in my thinking she says I, she, she describes this as a high that the moment you you cheat and you get this uh, adrenaline running you'll never forget it and you always seek another high but then when I was also watching this TED talk, I wanted I, a question came to me, and I said I must ask you, uh, ladies on the table, what do girls mean when they say, "It's not you, it is me." <laughs> it means it's you. 
<laughs> we're just being kind. polite. <laughs> Are I'm you kind. done, Tim? Yeah. Oh, Lord. Uh, this is also like a really good TED Talk. I encourage anyone, like they've said, who's ever been in love to really watch it. Um, what I really like and what we can take from the talk like TED book that she uses as a, a stylistic device is that she's very passionate about this subject. She unleashes the master within. You can tell she's very knowledgeable. She gave her percentages. She gave you, you know, different scenarios. She told it to you in a very convincing manner. The other thing she does is she uses stories. And we said that um, there are three types of stories that you can use. First are personal stories such as this of Priya, that relate directly to the theme of the conversation or presentation. Second are stories about other people who have learned a lesson so that the audience can also derive that same lesson. And third are stories involving the success or failure of a product, a brand, or the situation. Um, but then content-wise, the thing I really took away from it is that you know what? You can heal from the trauma of an affair. And you can do this in two ways, right? A, acknowledge wrongdoing on the part of the person who has uh, carried out the affair. Expressing guilt and remorse for hurting their partner, even if you don't feel sorry for having the actual affair. And then for the deceived, the thing that you can do is bring back your self-worth. And you do this by avoiding asking sordid details. So don't ask, where did it happen? How what many did times? you talk about? How many times? Don't ask any of those. <laughs> but switch instead to investigative questions. Those that can, can uh, unveil motives and meaning. So you're asking, what did the affair mean to you? Because then it opens up clarification. And I like the idea that she says, Pearl says, affairs can open up a new kind of truth for your relationship. So the conversations that you couldn't be honest about before, you can actually create a whole new marriage within your actual marriage or your relationship by just you know hitting the reset button, like, which I really liked. like. Like Will Smith. Oh. <laughs> By the way, if you, you forgot to mention that she says that monogamy and infidelity are not the same conversation. Exactly. So even in that situation, yes. for entanglement, yes. there was still hurt. There was still hurt. There was still hurt. <laughs> and then the other thing that I took away, which was sort of anecdotal, was it's only in the commandment that something is repeated twice in the Bible. Mm. And once for doing it, <laughs> and once for even just thinking about it, right? This is how uh, pervasive and how long this, this tradition and history has, has been. But guys, I'm going to leave it there. I want you guys to go and watch it on TED Talk. I want to say... W one thing before you yeah. close this, yes. um, GK. Yeah. I want to say that she has another TED Talk that yes. I realized when I was watching this one that I had watched years ago and it was called The Secret to Desire in a Long-Term Relationship, yes. which I feel is sort of the answer to the question for rethinking infidelity because sometimes when we, when I was reading through when I was listening to this I was thinking that perhaps we're leaving people who are in long-term relationships and we're <laughs> asking ourselves does it mean that we're always gonna have infidelity yeah. but she asks very good questions in that one that think to answer this one yeah. because at the root of infidelity is desire yeah. and the root of love is to have so she yes. says the verb for you to say you love someone is, is you to have, have them yeah. but the verb for you to desire someone is to want them yeah. so the question is can you want something you already have Ooh. and in answering that question yeah. then you continue to have desire in your relationship and yeah. bypass this infidelity loophole that she discusses fantastic she, she start a business <laughs> <laughs> we'll be yeah <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> on a day where we had a winning headline from the standard and a winning cartoon from the staff i want to leave you with it our partners do not belong to us they are only on loan with an option to renew or not and knowing that we can lose them does not have to undermine commitment rather it mandates an active engagement that long-term couples often lose so the realization that our loved ones are forever elusive should jolt us out of complacency in the most positive sense. So just because you have someone doesn't mean you can keep them, but it means you, you know, always have your A-game. <laughs> have a lovely weekend. <laughs> Subscribe to our YouTube channel. <laughs> but also find us on TV. We're on GoTV, Pan Peter, and Star Time. May 2M be inspired. Yes.